Hello everyone, welcome back to part 2 of the webinar series on monitoring coastal and estuarine water quality, transitioning from MODIS to WEIRS. Last time we had an overview of remote sensing observations for water quality monitoring in estuaries and today we are going to focus on processing MODIS and WEIRS level 1 images using CEDA software. Just a reminder that a homework assignment will be posted on September 21st on the RSET website. Uh, that's to be submitted via Google form. Due date for the homework is October 5th, uh, 2021. Uh, a certificate of completion will be awarded to those who attend all live webinars and complete the homework assignment by the deadline. You will receive a certificate approximately two months after the completion of the course from Marina Martins and her email address is given here. Outline for today is as follows. We will first have a brief review of part one. Then we will have an overview of installation of CEDAS and Ocean Color Science software or OCSSW. We will then see how to process MODIS and WEIRS level 1 images to level 2. We will have a demonstration of CEDAS processing and visualization of MODIS and WEIRS images for the Chesapeake Bay and Rio de la Plata. We will use MODIS and WEIRS images that we downloaded in the previous session. And we'll have finally a demonstration of WEIRS water quality products in coastal waters from NOAA. We will start with the review of part 1. We saw that coastal waters and estuaries are transition regions from land to open ocean. They support a variety of ecosystems and are important for regional and global economy. Increasing nutrients and sediments in coastal and estuarine waters is a major concern as it leads to low dissolved oxygen or hypoxia in the water. This is a major cause of destruction of benthic organisms and fish. For sustainable aquatic ecosystems in these regions, monitoring water quality allows us to understand how to mitigate the impact of land use change eutrophication and climate impacts on contamination in coastal and estuarine systems. Remote sensing provides regular and consistent observations over a large area with a consistent revisit time to monitor water quality in these regions. We saw that MODIS provides almost 20 years of moderate resolution and frequent observations. So almost daily observations for water quality monitoring and WEIRS will provide an adequate follow-on to the replacement of MODIS for ocean power monitoring. Earlier, we downloaded MODIS and WEIRS level 1 images from NASA Ocean Color Web for the Chesapeake Bay and Rio de la Plata for selected days in July 2021. Today, we will process these data to get water quality parameters. We will start with uh, some information about CDAS and OCSSW. So CDAS, here is the website with a lot of information. It's a NASA Ocean Biology official data processing and analysis software. The recently released latest version is 8.1.0 and CDAS has a graphical user interface or GUI version and uh, one can also download code for command line version. It is open source and can be downloaded from this website given here. Here is the download button and it is available, you can download freely from this site. CDAS 
is available for Windows, Mac operating system and Linux, Linux operating systems and it requires Bash shell, Python 3.6 or later and Python requests package version 2.18 or later. As you can see, uh, here is the link to different versions. So this is for Windows, this is for Mac, and this is for Linux. The CDAS GUI version can be used for visualization, processing, and analysis of images, and installation of OCSSW. It also allows running OCSSW to get level 2 and level 3 data from level 1 images. There is also capability of accessing available in-situ data from CBAS, the CWIFS Bio-Optical Archive and Storage System. Uh, this is publicly available oceanographic and atmospheric data as uh, shown here. Uh, there is a link to CBAS here. CDAS 8.1.0 contains CDAS toolbox that also includes Sentinel-3 toolbox which has OLG in it. This is a new feature included in this version. It is important to note that CDAS 8.1.0 version only allows visualization and analysis on Windows operating system Image processing using OCSSW is not yet available on Windows, but it will be available eventually. In this session, we will use CDAS GUI on Mac OS X for image processing and visualization. Before we start processing level 1 to level 2 data, here is some useful and important information. So here's a brief description of data levels and so starting with level 1A data. They are unprocessed instrument data at full resolution, time referenced and annotated with ancillary information including radiometric and geometric calibration coefficients and georeferencing parameters such as platform ephemeris data. So for satellite ephemeris data. Level 1B data are level 1A data that have had instrument radiometric calibration applied. So these are calibrated level 1A data. Level 2 data are derived geophysical variables at the same resolution as the source at level 1 data. For example, remote sensing reflectance, chlorophyll concentration, etc. are level 2 data. Level 3 data are derived geophysical variables that have been aggregated, projected onto well-defined special grid over a well-defined time period. So these are uniformly gridded data. For MODIS and VIRS data processing, we will use level 1A and 1B data to obtain level 2 data. A brief summary of water quality remote sensing is given here. Satellite sensors measure top of atmosphere uh, reflectances or radiances. The TOA uh, radiances result from a combination of surface and atmospheric conditions including effects of clouds and aerosol particles in the atmosphere. Water leaving reflectance depends on backscattering and absorption of radiation due to water, sediments, phytoplankton, and color dissolved organic matter or seed oil. The figure shows relative contribution of atmosphere in here. This is the atmospheric path, uh, water leaving, uh, and then surface reflected. So again, the figure shows contribution from these different components to top of uh, atmosphere total sensor. And as you can see clearly, atmosphere has the largest contribution to top of the atmosphere radiance. This is DOA and this is atmosphere and this is water and surface reflected. So clearly atmosphere has the biggest contribution. 
We saw last week, water living reflectances at various wavelengths depend on the inherent optical properties of water, resulting from quantities such as algal and non-algal particles and sedon. Uh, so different colors can be seen in here. So qualitative technique of deducing water quality from remote sensing depends on visual inspection of images to identify color from water living reflectances at various wavelengths. So just by looking at color, uh, one can deduce whether it's green, so it's chlorophyll, if it is just blue, it is a good quality water, if it is brown, it is sediment, etc. If it is dark, it is sedon, but this is qualitative information. Quantitative techniques use in situ measurements of water quality parameters co located with remote sensing reflectance data for a training period and to develop empirical or physical algorithms to derive water quality parameters. These algorithms then can be applied to satellite images subsequently to get quantitative information of water quality parameters. So, in situ observations are required to derive relationship between the satellite. Uh, data and the actual water quality parameters and that relationship then can be applied to um, future uh, satellite images. So Modis and Weir's standard algorithms uh, from NASA Ocean Biology Group are derived using in situ and remote sensing data. Details about these algorithms can be found from the links provided here. And the list of standard parameters is also given in this column. Before we process Modi's and Weir's data, it is important to talk about atmospheric correction. We saw earlier that top of atmosphere radiances over water received by satellites have the largest contribution from the atmosphere. Therefore, Satellite observations of reflectance have to be corrected for atmospheric effects for getting water surface reflectances. And there are various techniques exist for the atmospheric corrections and this is really not a trivial task. Um, you really have to have information about cloud particle and gaseous molecules and it also requires radiative transfer modeling along with atmospheric conditions clouds, aerosols, information as I just mentioned. So there are several atmospheric correction models as listed here. NASA Ocean Biology Processing Group has their own uh, atmospheric correction technique or model. USGS has a model, it's called 6S. Um, it is second simulation of the satellite signals in the solar spectrum. So there are six Assays. This is from USGS. Ecolite is from Europe, uh, that's a European model, sorry. And Hydrolite is a model that NOAA uses. So there are uh, various atmospheric correction models um, and this is also a uh, area of research where people are constantly finding uh, better ways to uh, correct water living reflectances um, and, and when they reach the top of atmosphere that they are properly corrected for atmospheric contribution. So this is a schematic of how water quality parameters are generally obtained from satellite observations. So there is an algorithm development phase as you can see here um, and so in here uh, that uses TOA radiances, top of atmosphere radiances from remote sensing and applies atmospheric correction to generate water living reflectances. So here is TOA atmospheric correction and then you have water living reflectances. You also have in situ observations of water quality parameters during a satellite overpass. This is important because uh, closer you are when satellite overpass and in situ data are, are measured, um, you have better accuracy of uh, relating satellite with in situ data. 
and based on this information statistical or empirical algorithm is developed to derive water quality parameter and those uh, model coefficients or uh, model algorithm they are then preserved and in in real time when satellite uh, overpasses a water body uh, it is at the top of radiances there are uh, atmospherically corrected to get water living surfaces and then using the model then this water quality parameters are derived quantitatively so here is how this is the general uh, way how uh, remote sensing is used for uh, deriving water quality parameters so nasa ocean biology group developed such models for various satellite sensors based on in situ data from cbas and what we will do is use these models in cdas and ocssw to get modis and weirs water quality parameters Next, we will have a demonstration of CDAS processing and visualization for MODIS and WEIRS images for the Chesapeake Bay and Rio de la Plata. So in the demonstration, we will select a few MODIS and WEIRS sample images and see how to process them. Uh, you recall this ocean color web from which we downloaded data from level one and two browser we ordered data selected swaths for uh, the Chesapeake Bay and Rio de la Plata region and uh, we used WGET uh, with uh, manifest file to download and save these files. So A are MODIS files and B are WIRS files. That's what we did in last session. Today we'll use some of those images and process them using CEDA software. This is actually preparation for an advanced training that we are going to offer very soon uh, where we will develop our own algorithms based on in situ data and satellite data. So for that, it's important that we process um, level one to level two using CDAS now. So what we're going to do is walk through uh, how to install CDAS uh, and OCSSW and then just proceed with image processing. So let's see if you click on CDAS, um, going back again here, if you look at CDAS, there's documentation, there is help, installation tutorial, video tutorials and demos. These are for older versions, but they are very useful. Some of the basic features remain the same, uh, even in the older versions of CDAS and some other material is there. If you go to CDAS, here it says the latest version is 8.1.0 uh, and it includes CDAS Toolbox and Sentinel-3 Toolbox for OG. Uh, on here it says features for CDAS is visualization, science processing and statistics. Operating systems are Linux uh, and Intel Max. This is for science processing for visualization windows also can be used uh, and then there is version history and previous version uh, information you would download appropriate file here so uh, you can download source code and compile uh, we are going to do that but we're going to use GUI version of this for now uh, this is for Windows, Mac, and Linux. This is the size. Uh, one more thing to note here is that there is a complete list of suggested hardware um, and software requirement. Uh, for data processing, 5 to 10 GB space is needed. For visualization, minimum of 256 color display is required and it requires java bash and python as we saw earlier requires this request library these are all absolutely necessary to run this um, software this version when you download cdas uh, and i am using mac so once i download the file I can then go to this to install and run CDAS, follow the instruction on this page. 
and here is for different uh, operating systems in, in instruction is given if you go down for Mac users which is what I'm using although it is very similar for, for Linux and Windows also basically uh, the .sh is the file that uh, you would save on your computer once you click on that table and then from command line um, type this so open the monitor uh, and then type this command sh and the file that you saved and then it opens an interactive window where you would um, tell it which directory to store it uh, and here it says let's find for Mac uh, so for, for once you do that it asks you for the directory to install it and for a clickable desktop browser window uh, save it as a CDAS home um, you name this directory slash bin and this app well, and then uh, so I have already done that so if I go to my applications folder where I've saved it as CDAS 8.1.0 bin and this is the CDAS app once you click on that you can open the browser version right there it asks you uh, whether you want to check which whether you're running latest version or not and we are so so now we have this CDAS window open so that's just as simple as that you just click download and then run this from command line and a window will open which will guide you ask you a bunch of options mainly where you want to install. Now let's see, once you are in CDAS, um, on top, uh, I hope you can see this, it's uh, CDAS, and then there is CDAS-OCSSW on top here. There is view, there is analysis, layer, vector, raster, optical, uh, tools, window, and help. If you go to CDAS OCSSW, uh, there is an option. It says install update OC processors. This is the science processing software. And um, it, um, if you don't have these options highlighted, that means you have to install OCSSW. If you already have installed it, you will be able to select these options in this table. Uh, even if you have these and you, it's okay to say install and update so if there are any new uh, uh, versions or new information it opens a window here is the window it says um, here is where it will install OCSSW here is something to note there are several versions the latest one is 2021.2 so important to go with this latest version now here you can pick this is modis aqua you can pick modis Terra if you like uh, this is veers uh, for snpp and for um, gpss you can also uh, select uh, only this is from lancet um, and then there are other past missions there which we're not going to install uh, you can say clean install so that it, if there are any errors or warnings um, it they are highlighted and but it, it tries to do uh, installation without any error or uh, warnings that it, otherwise you would be notified and then uh, just say run and then all the processors will be available here so when you update or run OCSSW through CDAS it takes a few minutes uh, depending on how many sensors you have selected but then uh, once you have it you will see all these options that you can select notice modis 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 uh, veers veers uh, these are uh, level 1a uh, processing software then more importantly it is level 2 generator so l2 gen this is um, this is what we'll be using to actually look at 
uh, water quality product. And then there are other options. We are mostly going to work with MODIS level 1 data, convert it to level 2 uh, using L2 gen, and then look at water quality parameters and see if we can compare even just visually uh, MODIS and VIRS um, data. So that's what we will do next. So let's start with uh, Chesapeake Bay. And uh, I have picked one image. Uh, so the steps are start with level 1A files that we already saved in the previous session. Once you have those L1A files, we need to find geolocation or geo files for those based on uh, mission ephemeris data. So here what we are going to do is first generate Modi's geo file because we have level 1A and we need geo file. So before we select Modi's and VIRS data to process, uh, just look at the file name convention. The important thing to note about is the first letter A for Modi's, Aqua Modi's, so A for Aqua and B is for VIRS. Um, here, then in both of them, uh, after the first letter, there's year, and then there's three digit Julian day. So we picked July 2021, so it is 2021 and 182, which is 1st first, first of July, and then it goes on to 31st of July as the Julian day is given here. Then our minute and uh, second, so 173500 for this particular image, and it is the same for VIRS. L1A, it's the uh, it's the level of data. LAC here for MODIS is local area coverage. It's a full um, resolution pixel uh, image, and it's in HDF format. For VIRS, uh, it's the same. It's L1A, but here it's telling you it's SNPP. Uh, if it's JPSS, it will show that, and this is in NetCDF format. So the uh, difference is that both uh, HDF and NetCDF um, formats, but CDAS can read all these files. So I downloaded 16th of July for Chesapeake Bay. Um, it appears to be a very clear image, and we will see what not so clear image also looks like. So let's start um, processing uh, Modis and Weir's image for Chesapeake Bay first. Uh, we already have installed uh, OCSSW. So first thing to do is let's look at Modis. You will find Modis geolocation file. And that's the first thing to do because we already have level 1A file. So let's click on Modis geo. Here is input file. I have 16th of uh, July uh, file and you can select that. Once you select it, automatically populates it output file name. It's the same, uh, but now it is not level one, it's geo file. So it's a geolocation information based on ephemeris. Um, and so once you do that, you also want to say refresh database. So refresh db and uh, run. Once you run that, uh, it launches workflow and it tells you when it's complete. So it says the program execution completed. So next step, after generating uh, the geolocation file, now it's time to get level 1B, which is um, sensor calibrated, so radiometrically and geometrically calibrated data for MODIS. So we can start with uh, MODIS L1B. Here also input is level 1A file that we just used to get um, a geolocation. And once you choose that, uh, it now has level 1A and geo file. And uh, let's keep everything uh, as default for now and say run. And when uh, the program uh, finish execution, you will have this level 1B files of, for local area coverage, half kilometer and 250, uh, half 
kilometer and quarter kilometer that's 250 and 500 meters so we will still uh, work with the local uh, area coverage LSE files now that we have level 1b file we will generate level 2 files or level 2 data which is the main program which gives you water quality parameters um, it this has this is a complex software main part of um, ocean data processing and has many options uh, we will look at a few we'll keep everything at default for now so now we are going to start processing modis and weirs level 1b images to get water quality products in level 2 these are level 2 data that we will get from by using l2 gen uh, here let's start by opening modis file for chesapeake bay which is um, for 16th of july and uh, we, we want level 1b file so we'll start with level 1b file here and when you input the file 1b it also puts geo file and look at the output file now it is level 2 l2 and oc or ocean color in the description that uh, that shows that it has ocean color parameters uh, in it um, then let us look at products so products have radiances and reflectances derived geophysical parameters inherent optical products and uh, other information for atmospheric correction for uncertainty um, these are there uh, then let's see here these are radiances RRs these are remote sensing reflectances or water living reflectances at different wavelengths they're all selected for now but let's deselect all infrared we are just going to keep visible and near infrared which are used for uh, ocean color algorithms um, these are also reflectances uh, top of atmosphere reflectance and this is top of atmosphere but it is Rayleigh connected etc these RRs are used for developing algorithms so we are keeping them on next we are going to look at derived geophysical parameters and we are going to look at parameters these are standard parameters as we saw in the presentation they are uh, given by L2 gen we are going to keep parameters which indicate alkyl bloom as well as hypoxia so chlorophyll A uh, then let's pick serum index uh, check this off this is uh, particulate inorganic uh, calcium concentration this is particulate organic carbon keep that and also pick SST here we are going to keep SST which is from 11 micron window uh, and get rid of those also so these are the basic parameters that we are going to explore from modis and weirs this one by the way is for chesapeake bay area once you have selected this let's look at processing options we are going to keep everything default but it um, has this AER opt is the one that has selection for atmospheric correction there are multiple options um, and depending on the area of your interest or the type of water that you are looking at uh, different atmospheric corrections might be better and that one has to try and decide which one is best we are going to use this default one with multi uh, scattering with two band relative humidity based model selection these wavelengths are for different types of thresholds say to detect cloud land etc and another important thing to notice here is that mass cloud flag is on that means if it is cloudy we do not get any data because um, optical data will not be able to see through clouds uh, this is mass highlight this is when radiances get saturated we do not get data mass land overland also uh, we do not have um, say chlorophyll concentration or SST uh, and um, if one more thing to notice here is it's all process ocean is one on so that all the water points are processed and process SST is also checked so that we can calculate SST one last thing to look at is that we 
for atmospheric correction, we do need information about atmosphere. And for that, we can get ancillary data. So it downloads ancillary files needed for atmospheric correction. But here, if you don't select that, then the climatology uh, is used to do atmospheric correction. Once all these are picked, we can run this. There are subsetting options. There are different thresholds you can set. Um, ancillary inputs information, IOP uh, options, uh, inherent optical property options, miscellaneous uh, information and calibration options. These are all advanced options that uh, we will be covering in future, but uh, not today. And once you do that, you can run this. And it takes a few minutes, but once you run this, you should get level 2 OC file for Moses for the Chesapeake Bay, and it's created here. Let's look at this. All the bands are here, and this is CROM index, two different types, although they are practically the same. Uh, let's see, chlorophyll A. Just here, this is Chesapeake Bay. One thing to notice here, this is not in geographical projection. This is more like satellite line and pixels. So what we are going to do is reproject this file. And for that, here is the symbol to click on. Creates a reprojection of a file. Once you click there, this is the file selected and the projection parameter says default as geographic let long, WGS84. It uses nearest or neighbor interpolation or resampling. And when you run it, um, it creates a reprojected file. I already have it, so but let's go ahead and create it. And so here you can see that the reprojected file now is created. And if you look at the bands, they're the same bands, they are reprojected now. And so this is chlorophyll A, looks more like it's a big bay now rather than elongated uh, water body. Uh, once we have this reprojected file, we can close this original file because we will be looking at the reprojected data. Now, I already have created reprojected files for weirs also. Only one thing to notice there, and let's go ahead and look at it. Let's see for weirs data. If we run L2 Chen uh, and select weirs data for level 1B for 16th of July, um, it will go through the same procedure. Uh, it will have geo file and output file. Everything will be the same except for processing options. Here, look at mm, atmospheric correction, it's multi-scattering with two band model selection and iterative NIR correction. So this is optimized for VIRS. So uh, that's just one thing to notice. Another thing we must make sure is that for MODIS, process SSD flag was always on, it's default. But for VIRS, we have to choose that uh, to be able to get SSD. So that's the only difference uh, to note here. And once you do that, you can run uh, this, get ancillary and run this to get level two OC file for VIRS. I already have those and I've already reprojected. So I'm just going to open that and load here for visualization. So this is the reprojected file. Uh, this is both for Chesapeake Bay. Now recall that we have another case study area and we have we downloaded data for that region last session also for Rio de la Plata in, in South America. And I have gone through the same process for Modis and Veers, start with level 1B and get to level 2. Uh, we can open the product here. So that is for uh, 11th of July, and this is MODIS, and for VIRS, U is VIRS. So now we have two study regions and two sensors, as we can see here. 
Now for the next few minutes, we are just going to focus on visualization of different parameters. In next session then, we will compare uh, modus and yields, uh, water quality parameters, the statistics in both of them. And we will also look at uh, those images at different times to see how they differ uh, over the two case study regions. So we'll start by visualizing MODIS data. Let's look at bands. Um, there are RRs here. These are reflectances. Uh, let's see if it's a blue. Uh, and you can see this is simple reflectance. It's unitless. Um, these are used for developing algorithms, and that's why we are calculating, although uh, for today, we're going to focus on derived products to visualize. So let's start with chlorophyll A, which is a um, indicator of algal bloom. Once you have this, you can add a land mask by clicking on this area. Land mask, create uh, with any color. So here is gray, create mask. And this creates gray area. You can change color table. Here is the color uh, manipulation window. We are going to keep this same, but we can change minimum and maximum uh, just to see the, let's look at the large value here. Uh, now you can see this is Atlantic Ocean, uh, much lower chlorophyllic concentration here. Here in the bay, in the coastal region, there are um, high chlorophyll A concentration values. As you go in, they're lower. We can add color table to this. Here is in milligrams per meter cube. This is the color table. This is the typical range for chlorophyll in the bay. Now, one more thing to notice, go to view, tool windows, and pixel info. It opens a window and it shows um, latitude, longitude, and values of the raster we are looking at. So here, when you click here, when I move the cursor, you can see how um, reflectance that we, uh, we loaded in here and chlorophyll concentration values are changing. This is like 13.98. If you go close to the post, it's 99.7 milligrams per liter. Okay. So now, also look at, let's close this. Uh, if you look at this, it's not a number. These are not defined data. And how would we find out why these data are missing? And for that, we're going to look at flags. There's a description of different flags on NASA Ocean Color uh, webpage uh, that we've been looking at. So land pixels, these are high glint pixels. These are pixels in shallow water, cold sea, and CLD ice, which is probably probable cloud or ice contamination. There is turbid water. Notice also that there is a product failure. Any of the product fails, that flag is set. Also, there is this bow tie tail or deleted off neighbor overlapping pixels. So those are missing and this is specifically for weirs. And in some images, uh, we will see uh, this example of how, how, how this affects water quality parameter extraction from the image. So here, when you click here, say, in this area, it shows these highlighted masks. So if it is, this is say land, so it says it's land and there is uh, product failure. If you go here, you can see that cloud ice and stray light contamination, they're on here. So that's why we do not have data. Also, this is shallow water because coast Z mask is also true. So this allows you to look at what different reasons are there for product failure or why don't we have chlorophyll data here. And these are the reasons. So quickly to look at different masks and uh, see why these data are missing. Um, clearly, um, in, in this part, it's either cloud or it's the shadow. Um, water, so pixel in shallow water, uh, product failure is occurring um, in, in this uh, small water part here everywhere. So this is 
profil A. Look at SST. This is in gray, but we can pick another color table. Let's do this. And uh, we can, this is landmark is already seen. Uh, we can also look at, let's look at CDON index. Uh, this is an interesting uh, parameter. It is a unitless quantity. Uh, it's a ratio between uh, different reflectances, RRs. So it is, when it is less than one, it shows deficit of CDOM or decrease compared to mean. And if it is above one, it is excess of CDOM. And it depends on chlorophyll also. This is dissolved uh, organic matter. And so it, both chlorophyll and CDOM, uh, they are not independent of each other. And so because of that, this is more like a relative index. But at the same time, we do have a particulate organic carbon, and that shows that is shown in milligram per meter cube. And you can see in the pixel info, when I move it, it's about 664, 685. Here, as we go, it is about 252. So, uh, particulate organic carbon uh, is available. Serum is available only as. Um, as an index, so it is either more or less than normal. Now we can also look at this um, particular inorganic letter, and then here, if you click, it shows it's turbid water, and so it is not uh, calculating or retrieving PIC. So a lot of data are missing because uh, most of it is turbid flow and in shallow water. So then it is not easy to uh, retrieve PIC. Um, we, we provided the link for algorithms in the presentation and in detail it's described, uh, it describes the algorithm and caveats for that. Here you can see PIC is 0 0.0021 mole per meter per cube. So these are um, different parameters. One more thing to look at is if you go to Windows, uh, you can see all of them at the same time. You can say, arrange them evenly. And so all the parameters that you see, they appear here. So we have chlorophyll A concentration, this is POC, this is SST, this is PIC, and this is CDON index. Uh, by the way, you can add color table to all of them. Um, when individually, and then it appears at the bottom here. So these are just to quickly visualize everything. And in view, it is synchronized image view. And because of that, when you move one, they all move together. If you zoom in or zoom out, they do it simultaneously also. So it's easier to look at. If you move anywhere, it shows entire uh, water quality parameter information at that pixel, including the flags. So these are um, good, um, it, this is good information to analyze data, okay? So this is for um, MODIS. Let's, let's for now um, look at um, VIRS data and then in our next session we will do detailed comparison. So I'm trying to close this. And then look at the VIRS data instead, uh, very quickly. Again, start with chlorophyll A concentration, add mask, make it gray, create. And we can also keep the same min and max so that we can compare with modes. And add color table. Here you can see, uh, um, again, the pattern is very similar as we saw earlier. Um, values are a little bit different. We will compare them next time. Uh, and again, um, you can see pixel information and flag information for all of these. Again, here, because of clouds, it's missing data. Okay, uh, we can look at SST. It's very similar to notice. And so forth, we will compare them all next time. This is PIC, 
again the pattern looks similar um, and slight differences um, you see this is C DOM index here this is um, different from MODIS and because it's the ratio of reflectances there are four different bands used uh, we will talk about it when we compare but so this is uh, not as useful CDOM index is as useful as say POC because it actually is particulate organic carbon that you can see here so uh, we will uh, we will look at these um, modis and waste data next time uh, one final note before we conclude today's uh, demonstration let's close this Chesapeake Bay file also let's look at Rio de la Plata region. Uh, here is the file from MODIS and start with chlorophyll A concentration again. Uh, here is the river as it opens in the ocean and uh, we can keep the same values here to compare with MODIS. Uh, as you can see much lower in, here in the open ocean as you go here the concentration uh, increases in the coast. There are missing data right as in, in this narrow part. It is because as you can see there is cloud, presence of cloud in the flag. You can see also it's shallow water. So that is one of the issues data are not retrieved. Let's look at serum in that. And look at the color bar here. Again, these data as we saw earlier for the Chesapeake Bay uh, they are missing because of the shallow water or turbidity as you can see in the flag but it gives you some idea of these are the data are missing uh, sometimes if you look at time sequence of these images it tells you how CDOM is varying and that's all you can do with this index but you can look at POC again the data are missing because of shallow water, pixel in shallow water and presence of cloud, it's probability that. SST, so nice coverage here, um, and PIC, it shows again these patches um, and then some missing data because it's basically in shallow water. So um, in open ocean, it works better, the algorithms for shallow water, sometimes there are issues uh, and uncertainties. But again, looking at time sequence, at least there is some indication um, and then uh, because uh, it's not possible to have in situ data everywhere, so at least this gives some indication, um, it, it complements in situ data in, in many cases even if it's shallow water. Finally, let's look at the same thing from years and then we'll complete the demonstration. Uh, a. Okay. Here you can see pixelization in views. There is SST. We can pick color like before. And uh, if you look at SST here from Modis, and this is from views. Yeah, values are different, but patterns are very similar. We will do statistics in the next session. POC from VIRS and also look at CDOM index. This is really, it's not uh, showing from VIRS uh, very well, uh, but uh, this basically is the, is the information for POC again from VIRS. And uh, so this. Last part of the demonstration just showed how to display data, how to manipulate color, how to see different flags, how to see pixel level values uh, for the two uh, case study regions and from two sensors. So we will conclude this demonstration now. Um, next, we are going to have um, Juan uh, Torres Perez talking about more post watch. So I request him to talk about that.
Okay, well, uh, this, here's a demonstration that I wanted to, to do in regards to the Noah Nesty's uh, website, Ocean Color website, and it's, uh, it's a website that is particularly useful for, for visualizing or at least to have an idea on what are the some of the conditions uh, in your in your study area in regards to uh, different uh, water quality parameters like chlorophyll A, uh, uh, vertical alternation coefficient, among others. And uh, first, I want to go over this uh, list of, uh, of uh, uh, different things that are uh, available. Uh, you can see that there are different products for bears, and there's even a uh, Sentinel-3 products that are already available at uh, level two or level three. Um, there's some information about the data processing, how it was done, and about the ocean color uh, website in, in general. And um, here's some data about calibration, validation of the, uh, of the imagery. Very important also, there's a there's a link here for peer review publications and it, it is on a yearly basis it's a as a updated very frequently and this is particularly useful because uh, pretty much all of them have their doi and so you can you can go directly to that link and uh, most likely you will be able to download most of them and like i said it's by by, by year and uh and you can you can you can download uh, a lot of them. It's it's particularly useful for for if you're working with uh, with your own set of data and for references for uh, future uh, publications as well. Also, there's I wanted to show that there's here's uh, the uh, well here's the the link that used to be for the FTP side. It's not I don't think it's available anymore, but this is the one that I, we're going to see today. The Coast Watch. Ocean color data uh, uh, site from 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 this main nest site, and um, I wanted to show you that one in particular because it has products that are already available for various are um, for for Sentinel three uh, at different levels, and some of them are near real time products such as the one that you're seeing here for ocean color. And others are what they what are what are called science quality products. So these these are they have more rigorous uh, uh, processing. Um, there there could be a delay in terms of uh, you might not be able to see what it's their science quality uh, data sets for let's say yesterday or today. But um, there's a delay because it it, they, 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 it needs some time to be to be processed. I think the delay is about two weeks uh, or so. But anyway, it's 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 not bad, definitely. Um, other real time, uh, near real time products from from beers, and uh, um, on let uh, on a twenty day twenty daily merge uh, also. And if you go down here, here's the products for Sentinel-3 uh, global coverage and also for uh, CONUS, so continental US, but it includes uh, Hawaii uh, as well. And also there is uh, access to the uh, some anomaly products, particularly for chlorophyll for, uh, for beers. Uh, these are very useful. Uh, if you want to see what are the trends or if there's been any any difference in the trends over time with uh, with some of these uh, data sets okay so here's a uh, i encourage you guys to to go to this website uh, i also wanted to mention some some of the other uh other links that are here that are that are uh, particularly useful. There are field observations, uh, the Moby website uh, for the uh, buoys is, a, is a, something that people are, um, rely on a lot quite frequently. In situ uh, monitoring data for bears in particular for ocean color. The, and there are other resources. The user forum is very useful useful because um, um, you can talk to other people that have used the data or if you have any questions you can post them there and someone will, will answer them eventually and about the the people who work in the program who to who to contact if you need uh, some sort of a uh, help with it there's even a phone number here for, for the uh, help desk uh, that it's uh, also very useful 
Okay, so going back again to our main, to the main website, to the Nestis website, I wanted, what I wanted to do was to show you, um, as an example, and again, feel free to, you're free to, 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 uh, to play with this and, and go through all the different uh, data sets uh, on your own. This is just an, as an example, because it's a, this is a Modis Bears uh, webinar. I wanted to show in particular the beers, so some MPP uh, ocean color view. And um, when you open the the site, originally you will see that it it uh, it shows in uh, it also it also shows the two color images or composites for the whole world. And you see here's a timeline that you can look for particular years or months or days, whatever it's more useful for you. There's a daily data, there's an eight day, uh, day composite monthly as well as a climatology. And there are different products uh, available here. Here's a list of them. And uh, this is the, for instance, uh, chlorophyll A and KD490, which we'll see in a moment, uh, but there's a bunch of others, uh, KD PAR, uh, water living rate, and normalized water living radiance at different wavelengths. And uh, there's some PAR and suspended particulate matter experimental products as well, as well as uh, the uh, different coefficients for absorption of phytoplankton, uh, color dissolved organic matter, among others. So feel free to to a browse through through this uh, website. Now, when you look at this, you you see that there's a it's a two color image. So there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, clouds uh, through the world. Uh, if you want to visualize in, uh, the some of the products, then you just need to uh, uncheck the two color, and here you are. Here you have the the in this case in particular, it's, it shows the chlorophyll A uh, uh, data for beers, and it's on a, a daily basis. And I have here the September 4th as an example of, uh, of this year. You can go through anywhere in the world where there's data. Obviously, there's there's going to be, uh, because this is uh, uh, optical data, there's going to be a lot of sites or uh, areas where there's no data available for that particular day. Let's use, let's say uh, we zoom in here in the Caribbean. You see that, for instance, here's a uh, here's a SWAT, and there's, there's, there's a lot of sites here that there's no data, because most likely there was uh, some clouds uh, in that area. But uh, then you can just uh, you know, search uh, over any particular day uh, during the year, and you'll see you'll see what it's uh, what it, what's the different uh, what data is available for for any of those years. Again, this is only for visualizing. It's not it doesn't have a part uh, uh, an area where you can do an actual download from this particular link. Um, but you can go to the web page that I showed earlier, or you can even download the you know the actual uh, data as how we showed uh, during the last session from the uh, from either Ocean Color Web or other website. Um, I wanted to as a, just to uh, walk you through how you can see some of it. I am originally from Puerto Rico, so I'm going to show you. Uh, Let's say we wanna zoom in into the, the island here. There you go. Here's, uh, let's say for October 20, uh, I mean, August 29th, uh, just again, as, a, as an example, you can go to pretty much any day. There's, uh, like I said, there's a delay in the, in the, in, in, in the when the products are gonna be available, just you know, because it, it requires some, some time for processing. In this case, we're seeing KD490 for uh, uh, one of the first products. You can zoom in to the island. This is as far as it goes. Um, but it is very useful because you can move around. I think these are four kilometer pixels. And you can move around it and have an idea of, what, of in this case, what was the was the vertical attenuation in, in 490 nanometers through the coastline. Um, there's a caveat here that uh, 
that I, I'm guessing most of you who work with remote sensing have, uh, have encountered is that, for instance, if you go really, really, really close to the, because these are four kilometer pixels, really close to the, to the shoreline, there's a chance that you will see some anomalies there. Uh, for instance, uh, in this case, I run in very really high KD490 uh, value um, that you're not, you shouldn't be expecting in that, in that area. Um, let's see, let's look at the chlorophyll, uh, for instance, you'll see for, uh, I know this area very well because I've worked there for, for many, many years and, uh, typical values of chlorophyll are, uh, at the, the highest are probably around three or, four, or even four milligrams per cubic meter. Anything above that is, is probably an anomaly. I saw a nine, nine milligrams here. Uh, there it goes at, at some point, um, and uh, there's uh, for that for that particular pixel, there could be maybe a couple of things. One is um, there's a mix; it's, it is a mixed pixel of uh, of water and land, or there's if if it's a really really shallow area. Uh, this area in particular is called uh, Bahia Susia in in the on the, on the southwest uh, corner of the island. And, uh, and it's an area that is that is pretty shallow, so there's there's a big chance that there's an influence for the bottom reflectance in in that area, and that uh, uh, the consequence of that is that we're seeing really high values of of chlorophyll that are most likely unreal. Um, but for areas that for that are a little bit off the coastline, uh, it's pretty reliable in terms of. of uh, of uh, of the products for chlorophyll or 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 KD four ninety. So again, I encourage you guys to uh, go to the website uh, for if you're in the academia or so. It's a really neat and cool website for showing some of the ocean color products, you know, directly uh, there, or have your students uh, play with the or with the with the web page and and even find some data. For, for pretty much any day. Uh, there's, there's data available from, from Pierce. And I believe there's also here from Sentinel, data from Sentinel-3 uh, as well, and even Goshi, some Goshi data. Okay, and lastly, I wanted to show this uh, uh, website. This is in particular for those of you who are interested in coral reefs. It's a, uh, from the NOAA Coral Reef Watch. And they have a number of different products uh, available from 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 this uh, website. Um, it is an experimental product that it's only available so far for the main Hawaiian islands and for for Puerto Rico. But if you work in if your web if your uh, study site is in one of these uh, uh, <coughs> areas, you can you can definitely download uh, uh, data from from uh, from 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 them. And, and it's something that we've used pretty, pretty frequently, actually. I wanted to show you what was uh, other products that were available. But for instance, before I go into that, let's say that I want data from Puerto Rico again. It will show, here's uh, the different products from Bears, uh, uh, the uh, daily uh, data or uh, three-day average or eight-day average, same thing for uh, KD 490, a daily or three or eight days uh, averages. And here's a, here was a, uh, the link to download it because um, FTP is not supported anymore. What you, you need to do is that instead of clicking directly on it, click uh, do right click on it, so copy the, uh, the link address, and then open it in, a, in, a, in another browser and you'll be able to access the, the folders. Uh, you might, might need to to uh, do a refreshing on the or uh, the on the cookies and such from 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 your particular system uh, to access it, but uh, but it's 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 available and you can even uh, download it download the data as a graph as a time series graph for uh, in this case for for chlorophyll A you see the uh, how it varies through through the months from 2020 to 2021 and lastly I wanted to show that there's other products available for those who are interested in coral reefs in particular. Uh, the bleaching alerts from NOAA for, for the whole world, 
uh, also. Uh, this is on a five kilometer uh, daily global uh, <coughs> resolution. Yeah, the different, you can go to different tropics or the East, West, uh, Indo-Pacific, Caribbean, etc. Also, another product are the, the degree, degree heating weeks, again, at five kilometers. And I, and I don't want to forget that here's a, here's a, uh, just a, a short brief, in, brief or uh, information about how, wh what is the product about. And, uh, and also, uh, you can even contact them if there's a, if you need additional data. And uh, hot spots also for 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 coral reefs. Uh, see the first temperature and the anomalies, and uh, also something that particularly managers use very much is uh, regional virtual stations, where uh, yeah, that it it shows for uh, the, here's a bunch of uh, the different stations throughout the the world. And uh, what is a what is a what it shows what's a possibility uh, of having a bleaching event in any of those areas, based on the uh, current sea surface temperatures uh, in the in, in that particular region. Okay, that is what I wanted to show you guys uh, today in terms of this these two uh, sites that are available from from NOAA in particular, but uh, but they use BIRS data uh for different parameters and let's go back now to the uh to finish the the presentation okay i want let's uh i want to remind you that this one and juan torres i want to remind you that uh now that that you can post your questions in the q a box and uh and the, we're gonna go go in a moment through uh, to the q a uh part of this uh webinar and uh also i want to remind you that if by any chance we weren't we're not able to uh answer your particular questions eventually we will as you said we have there's a high volume of of people in this uh webinar but um we'll be sure that eventually the q a document is going to be available on our website in the next couple of days for you to download or for your benefit. Here's again the uh, the contact information for Amita, myself, and also from for Sean McCartney. Here's the, the our emails and also the the course the, the website for this particular webinar uh, as a reference and also the website for ourselves. Remember that there's a lot of other are set webinars available in that website so i encourage you guys to go and browse through through them and also if by any chance we're not able to answer your particular questions during the q a feel free to send us an email to either amita myself or sean and uh, we will do uh, what we can to 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 provide an answer uh in a, on a timely matter All right, well, thank you very much again for participating with us today, and let's go to the Q&A. Hi, everyone. Um, let's go through the QA um, as much as we can, and if we cannot complete that in time, we will um, provide these answers online. So the first question is, I have a, a question on CDAS. Is the software in, interoperable, or interoperable with GIS software packages such as ArcGIS and QGIS? So, um, so yeah, the answer is that you can export shapefiles from CDAS to um, GIS software. And uh, there is a link given here. Yes, so you can also save this data um, that you do analysis on CDAS, you can save that and then open with GIS also and do further analysis. Um, could you please provide a step-by-step -step guideline to activate OCSW in CDAS in Windows? So in Windows, uh, I don't uh, believe OCSW is available yet, uh, not for version 8.2. 
1.0. But um, uh, we will check with the ocean color form and try to provide a um, more accurate answer that when it will be available. Uh, at which level data are georeferenced? So level one uh, data are georeferenced. What about the average transmittance? We'll have to uh, check and let you know about that. Uh, Juan, if you know question four. Um, no, that uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's a specific answer for that. It will definitely vary through pretty much anywhere where you're in the world. Uh, <clears throat> typically, people use things, uh, you know, instruments like some photometers and others to to try to to get a, a specific value for for that particular site. But in theory, usually, uh, as as we mentioned in the in the presentation, uh, remember that it's. Uh, uh, from when you're looking at a, at a at any image from from the ocean or any coastal area, pretty much about eighty percent of the image on an average is uh, is related to the to the atmosphere, and then there's the the rest uh, is, is probably reflected from the from the water surface. Okay, I think I can go over the next uh, couple ones. Uh, I'm a little unclear about using CDAS OC SSW in Windows. The page states now uh, previous CDAS version 8.0 did not support Windows processing, but the current does suppose, uh, support Windows processing. So currently the the OC SSW is not available for for Windows. It's mostly for visual visualization, and uh, <clears throat> um, you can you can uh, you can you can most times just just do visualizations with that in Windows. Uh, maybe at some point they will also be available for for Windows. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, it happens uh, soon because uh, there's probably a lot of people that are that are uh, waiting for that. Um, number six, I can take number six here. Um, how are the in situ observations estimated every time there's a satellite overpass? Uh, uh, well, I would say this, uh, coming from, from someone who does uh, <coughs> a lot of uh, uh, field work, uh, it is practically impossible to do in situ observations every time there's a satellite overpass, uh, mostly because of just uh, well, uh, many, many uh, factors that, that, that come into place, uh, budget uh, and uh, you know, sea surface conditions and uh, or, or just you know, uh, weather conditions among others, availability of votes, etc. Et so the for modis or beers, when you think about uh, as an example, those two uh, systems, uh, it would require pretty much daily in situ data uh, to uh, <clears throat> and, uh, uh, and and that it's uh, you know again practically impossible. Uh, you what you do is you establish your your in situ observations timeline based on the research question that you want to be answered that you want to answer. And uh, if there's a particular season with, uh, let's say, less probability of clouds or calmer waters that are uh, preferred, um, for instance, if you're working in the tropics, uh, you have to take into consideration the uh, hurricane season uh, or hurricane or, or cyclone uh, seasons through the year, depending on where you are on the planet. And, and that sort of thing. The important aspect is to plan your data collection, as we said last uh, during the last session, within 
plus or minus 30 minutes to an hour uh, before or after the the satellite overpass. And that way you are, you make, and that's uh, the purpose of it is to make sure that you are characterizing basically the same water mass as when the satellite was uh, flying by. So, but, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was talking about question seven. Are you talking about uh, that or are you done? I don't know. Go ahead. So, uh, I think we're in question seven right now. Cool. Question seven is how can I know the actual time of satellite overpass um, of our desired area to acquire more this data? And so on uh, NASA Ocean Color Web and the software and tools, there's online tools. Um, there is um, satellite overpass predictor in there. If you click on that, um, it asks you for latitude, longitude uh, of your interest um, and start and end dates. And so during that period, how many times uh, MODIS is going to overpass in that latitude, longitude band? Um, it will give you time, date and time. So that way you know when there is overpass. And uh, if you can plan taking in situ measurements close to that time, that's great. Uh, so again, question eight is about Windows and CDAS. Um, it, the currently, uh, I think visualization analysis can be done. So if you have level two data already, you can well, work. Um, in CDAS with that, but uh, OCSSW, I don't think it's available, and we will check and get back to you on that. We will post that information. Uh, question nine is about screen size smaller than 15 inches uh, can run CDAS or not. Um, I have run it on smaller 13 inches uh, monitor, so I don't think it's the physical size that matter. It matters. It's the uh, pixel resolution and the um, whether it can display 256 colors or not, that's what matters. Question 10 is, can we expect OCSW for Windows? Again, we will uh, get back about that. We'll check with Ocean Color Form and let you know. Do we need a source code version uh, for CDAS command line model? In command line, you can you can get you can install compiled version, so you don't have to start with um, source code. You can just get uh, there is a way to get the compiled version, and that instruction is there on um, CDAS page. Install from previous course, and it says it is updated. Is there any substantial difference? With version eight, so again, there is addition addition of Sentinel three toolbox in um, in eight point one point zero, and GUI also looks a little different, um, uh, especially the uh, color window, the uh, color selection window, and um, layer managers also uh, flag uh, information displayed. So some of, some of, some differences are there. But the main thing I see is this Sentinel-3 toolbox that's there in 8.1.0. Um, question three is, please, can you share the level one data? Uh, so yeah, that, that was done in um, level, uh, in session one. So it's a simple procedure um, to, to get the data. Um, I think anything to do with Windows and OCSSW, we will get back to you about that. Uh, question 15 also we will have to check because uh, NetCDA file should work on CDAS uh, once you download from NASA Ocean Color, so we will have to check on that. As we know, the Correct coefficients vary regionally. Can we use a mix of global regional coefficients while algorithm development? Um, I 
one, I, I'm not sure I'm clear about the question. Yes, the first part is clear. Regionally, these coefficients are different. So practically for, for um, all regions, you, you, can you have to develop algorithm or at least validate it. So can I use a mix of global and regional coefficients? while algorithm development. So I believe what you're saying is that if you have some algorithm, uh, like in CDAS, it is based on CBAS, which is um, not, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure about global coefficients. Most of them are regional coefficients. All the algorithms are. If you can clarify your question, that would be great. Uh, question seven, is there a reference document to know more about parameters listed in CDAS that can be understood better before selecting them for processing? Yeah, so that's the documentation for CDAS. Is it possible that daytime SST is lower than nighttime SST in the ocean in any case? Um, so diagonal variability of SSTs, um, it, it also has a component of wind and also uh, evaporation of water can also change um temperature so i think um it's possible in in cases um i'm also thinking that uh, if it's cloudy night then there will be less cooling of the surface if you just think in terms of radiative transfer but ocean is a dynamic place and so so it's a combination of atmospheric condition plus winds, how they they act on water and that. So it is possible that uh, in some cases, I'm, I'm not sure it, it's possible that every day, um, daytime temperature is um, lower than nighttime, but that can be cases. I, it's not impossible, I think. Uh, Juan, if you want to add anything on that, or Sean. Next question is for atmospheric correction, you point out it depends on water geographic and other properties. Is there a specific guide for the choice of the right atmospheric correction method? Um, so it is, uh, if, if again, I, I we strongly recommend that you go to um, ocean color forum uh, that has discussion about uh, atmospheric correction um, the guideline would be to know uh, the, the atmosphere uh, and uh, water both that what kind of correction would be needed but if you if you are using cdas then um, you probably want to try all the options and see how uh, your answers differ for water quality parameters. What are the ranges and then can you compare it in situ data and come up with a good option? Um, in many cases, I think it's the information about aerosol and cloud themselves. They, um, they are important for atmospheric correction and um, so different models, where they get their information and how they treat radiative transfer, that uh, scattering processes, that uh, is a big issue. So it, it, this really is still not a final, um, there's no final answer yet. But that's why there are quite a few models and that are constantly being evolved. Um, new um, sensor like PACE would have one advantage that in the same sensor they will have ocean color bands as well as um, observations of atmospheric aerosol and clouds at the same time. So that might help 
in better specifying atmospheric condition for atmospheric correction. So I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you a straightforward clear answer because I don't think there is uh, any guideline, but just to try uh, different atmospheric correction models. Uh, this is a good question, 20. Uh, what is the advantage of generating L2 files uh, locally to downloading them directly? Is there a difference in resolution? Um, so L, if, if you go to um, uh, L2 data that are there in, in um, CDAS right now and that we calculated and those which are already available from the uh, from the ocean color side um they are based on algorithms they were derived when cvips was launched years ago and algorithms were developed and then they were modified for modis so those are the same algorithms always used um for if you want to develop your own algorithm then you have to start with level one data and um, work with uh, in so reflectance data basically level one reflectance data and develop your own algorithm that's why we are starting with level one data and then going to level two so that um, uh, uh, Another thing is about atmospheric correction. If you want to try different options, then you would you would convert level one to level two by yourself. If you just want to have want some um, overall uh, pattern, then ready-made L2 data you can definitely look at. We started with L1 because um, of these two reasons that you can. Um, big options for atmospheric correction and other things to convert to level two. I think question 21 also is the same, um, similar answer. Uh, is there any, yes, so the links are given below question 22. There are YouTube um, links here, there are, there are tutorials about um, CDAS. Can I generate level two data from level data in Windows by other image processing software? Um, not that I'm aware of. You can, um, no, there's no, no, I don't think there's any software that would do that. Question 24, I just installed the CDAS plugin for SNAP. Can it do the same capability as the exercise in the demo? How does one do semi-analytical or analytical models in CDAS? Um, this is more advanced training. Um, don't think we have, uh, we will be able to cover this, uh, question 24. But we can we can share this question with um, people who use Snap and get back to you if we can. Question 25 is: What are the background expression mathematical equations that were developed to the extract these water? Ah, so in the presentation there is a slide where all these uh, parameters are standard parameters are listed. And if you click on those links, it describes every algorithm for chlorophyll A, for BIC, for POC, for uh, KD. Well, so uh, all, all the parameters, all the algorithms are different, are defined. Um, and all the mathematical equations, which bands were used, etc. Are the products generated with l 2 gen the same as those proposed for download uh, on the Ocean Color website. Um, e yes, actually, if you download uh, level two, they should be pretty much the same. They, they shouldn't be different. Sorry, I've been on mute. <laughs> um, is 
the question at uh, V2011 L2 LSE OC images. Uh, okay, yeah, so where's images, uh, some kind of uh, stripe pattern is shown and that's, that is not uncommon for image processing. Um, so um, that for years we also talked about this uh, effect. It has um, overlapping pixels are not considered, or you don't have data. So for years that also is possible for a particular image that you will see stripes. But um, that's basically it is the processing sometimes that does that. Um, so if the calibration has some issues, sometimes stripe show up even in that case also. So question 28 is, is there a way to define which Python to use? Yeah, so I, I think Python 3.6 or above, as if you can refer to the, the documentation and it, uh, it shows the version you need. Are there safe and reliable links where we can download the requirements that should be available from? Yes, there is a link and we will provide that. So question 30 is a good question, whether if there is a high and low tide, would there be a difference? Um, I don't know the clear answer, but it's possible. How does one deal with missing data? So if there are, sometimes people do binning uh, and so it's basically just interpolation, some kind of. The so question 33 is, is there an available online data set of historical in situ observations. So yes, CBAS has um, in situ data and uh, they go back several years. Uh, so if you look at CBAS link, you can uh, get chlorophyll and uh, SST data. This is a historical time series. Are there chlorophyll A product available that uh, were derived from Sentinel-2 data? Um, actually, you, uh, there is um, in the command line version of uh, OCSSW, you can derive chlorophyll A concentration from MSI. It's not available in GUI. But um, I don't know the product available from uh, Sentinel-2. No. Uh, question 30. Um, okay. So I think uh, we will address the uh, rest of the questions um, and provide answers. Um, we will see you in session three uh, next Tuesday on 21st. Um, we thank you all for attending uh, this session. And um, uh, we thank everyone. Uh, Juan and Sean McCartney. We also thank uh, Brock Levin, Selvin Hudson odoy and Jonathan O'Brien, uh, our RSA team, for helping with this webinar. And uh, we we'll hope to see you next Tuesday.